Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number seven. This week's episode is a bit different than past ones. It's meant for a very specific audience. I'm making this video to help out the people who are assembling the next version of the camera axe. I'm gonna sort of point out some of the things they need to watch out for during assembly, how to test it, how to load the new version of the firmware. That said, since it is about the next version of the camera axe, and I know there's a lot of people out there interested in that, I thought I would make this a public video and sort of make it a early preview of, of what's coming in the next version of the camera axe. Um, now I'm gonna go over a few of the non-intuitive assembly points for this version of the camera axe. I will put a few high-res images of each side of the board on the show notes for this episode. The first thing is, with the LCD screen, I like to leave this top layer of protective film on to protect the LCD during shipment. Um, there's two additional plastic film layers, one over the backlight and one on the back side of the LCD, and those both need to be removed before soldering, but I leave this top layer of, of film on. On this side, there's six pins that go from the LCD through the backlight to the PCB, and there's three here and three there. These need to be soldered from the LCD to the backlight, or the backlight won't get any power and it won't turn on. So make sure you solder those six connectors. Um, and then obviously you solder all of the connectors for the LCD um, there and those six up on top to the actual PCB. And then on the back of the PCB, I made a, a few mistakes with the um, silk screen for the PCB. Everything in the Eagle files that I share is correct. I just didn't label some stuff or I labeled it incorrectly. First off, these um, tantalum uh, capacitors, 100 microfarads, they are polarized, but I forgot to put the little plus sign on the PCB silk screen. So on the bottom one, the bottom portion is positive, and on the top one, the top portion is positive. You can see that there's a little stripe there on the capacitors. Um, make sure you get that right. And the other mistake I made on the silk screen is down here, there's um, two uh, components that are listed as 0.1 microfarad capacitors. And actually the top one is supposed to be a 10K resistor. Again, that's correct on the uh, Eagle files. I just mislabeled it on the PCB silkscreen. Now I'm gonna go over what you need to do in, to install the firmware. Uh, first you need to install WinAVR and I'll include a link to that in the show notes. For this, th this is needed to get the uh, drivers for uh, the ISP programmer. You'll also need to install the Adreno uh, software. I'll include a link to that in the show notes as well. That's a pretty easy install as well. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug in this AVR programming device into your USB mm -hmm. port. And if it's the first time, it will want the drivers. And all you need to do is point it to that WinAVR directory uh, that got installed. And it should get the correct drivers from that directory. Then this is the test board for the camera axe. And um, there's a one on it on one corner of this um, plug and you'll want to put the red wire by the one on the ISP plug. Then you'll take the camera axe board you've assembled, plug in a battery, and plug in the USB board to the uh, camera axe and you, this orange light should turn on. Then you need to turn mm -hmm. on the camera axe. And um, the first time you do that, it, it won't boot to anything. I've already loaded the software, so it's booting, but normally it'll just be a blank screen. Then with it on, you'll take um, the test board, and there's 
these six pins, and they can be pressed in, and you'll line that up with the ICPS mm, holes on, on the camera axe. You'll hold that uh, down. Then we go back to the computer, and in the Adreno software, we'll select the Tools menu, and you want to make sure that the board is set to Adreno Uno, the first option. The serial port should be set to the non-COM1 um, option, and this won't show up until you plug in the USB into the camera axe. Uh, and then you'll go to Burn Bootloader with the, the uh, AVR ISP Mark II. Make sure that you have the pins, um, the six pins that um, are on the test board placed into the camera axe at this point because that's what's being used right now. It takes maybe 10 seconds or so to burn the bootloader. And it says done. Then you no longer need to hold those six pins in place because this next step uses the USB cable that's plugged into the camera axe. And you go to, um, you just hit uh, this upload button actually. And if the bootloader was installed properly, then this uploading um, through the USB cable will work correctly. This takes maybe another 10 or 15 seconds. And there, it's successful. If, if it fails, there'll be a red message saying that this step has failed and you'll have to uh, probably do the bootloader again and then maybe um, this software again. But it should work as long as you had um, the connection, the, the pins set up correctly on, on the previous step. Um, so now the camera X software should be successfully installed. So the last thing is to just test the camera X to make sure it's working. So here's the test board um, with the LEDs and it's got um, some sensor ports. And those plug into the sensor ports on the camera X and the camera X has some camera flash ports. Those plug into the camera flash ports on the test board. And then to enter test mode, you hold down the activate button, turn the camera ax on. It'll say reset successful release buttons. But before you release the buttons, you should see that these lights are blinking at the same time these green lights blink. And um, the green lights blink, all four of them, at half the rate of the red lights here. And if all of those things are working, then that says all of the sensor ports are, are functioning correctly. When you release that, the last thing you should test is to make sure that all of these buttons, um, there's seven here, and they all do sort of different things, but you can figure out what they do pretty quickly. Um, so there's seven buttons there that should all do something. And then there's two buttons here, and these will just turn on um, these lights and, and light up these green lights while the test board is plugged in. And that's pretty much it. As long as it passes all of those tests, that means the, the camera X board is, is fully functional.